Today's purpose of these few words is to remind us about the virtue of the month that is coming in a few weeks' time. You find that many people, when they think of the month of Ramadan, strange things happen to them. In fact, they start to panic. Some of them, they start to think to themselves, well, how am I going to enjoy myself now without my food and drink? How am I going to sit and watch my movie without my pizza? These are the kind of thoughts that go through their mind. How am I going to go to work? It's going to be so difficult. How am I going to go to school while I'm fasting? Negative thoughts. But rather the believer, he has the opposite. The believer, when he thinks of Ramadan, he or she thinks of an opportunity to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To re-establish the connection that has been lost. To rediscover the sweetness of faith, which is gained through a connection with Allah and through plentiful acts of worship. So we know that the Salaf, the righteous, those who came before us, the best of generations, and those after them who followed their way, they would long for Ramadan six months before its approach. They would beg Allah allow us to reach Ramadan. And even after having lived through the month of Ramadan, they would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from them. So their outlook to Ramadan was a yearly outlook. It wasn't just a few days for them in their minds. It was something so immense and so important and so full of virtue that they took real care and they really prepared for it to the best of their ability. Ramadan, as we know, is the greatest event that ever took place in the history of humanity. The greatest event that ever took place in this world. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان as Allah says the month of Ramadan wherein the Quran was revealed guidance and clarity for mankind the greatest event the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to mankind the last of the speech of Allah that's why this month is so important it's a celebration of the Quran as we will come to know question for you which other revelations took place during this month of Ramadan? The Injil, that which was revealed to Musa alayhi salam, the Torah, and also to Ibrahim alayhi salam, as collected by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad. He narrates this. So we know that this is an amazing month. It's not just for the revelation of the Quran. Allah chose this month for the revelation of the, that revelation which came before. So it's always been a blessed and special month. When this month comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares it for his slaves. Allah subhanahu goes as far as changing the laws of the universe. Ponder this. It's that special. Allah changes the laws of the universe. The Prophet sallallahu narrated to, to us in Sahih al-Bukhari on the authority of Abu Huraira, radiyallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu said, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانِ فُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَهَنَّمِ وَصُفِدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينِ the Prophet وسلم, said, when Ramadan comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the doors and the gates of the heavens to be flung open. And he causes the gates of the hellfire to be locked, shut tight. And he causes the devils to be chained up. Now think about this. Why is the heavens, the doors of the heavens, flung open in the month of Ramadan? It's a month of mercy. There's plenty of mercy descending. There's plenty of good deeds going up. It's like Allah is telling you, what's wrong with you? The doors of Jannah have been opened for you. What are you waiting for? Come, walk through. You see the virtue? You see the mercy of Allah in this month? And also on top of that, Allah has told you that He's locked the doors of the hellfire. He's tied up the shayateen. What excuse do we have not to benefit from that month? How is it that you cannot benefit when all of this has taken place? by Allah Azawajal to help us to reap the virtues and the blessings. Taib, one may ask a question and may say, okay, you told me that the shayateen are locked up, then why is there still evil taking place? Why do I still find myself doing evil? What can be the answer to that? It could be that this is only the locking up for the major shayateen. Okay, the ones who are the leaders of the shayateen, the little ones, they're still running around. Or it can be that it's pertaining to your iman and it's pertaining to your nafs. May Allah protect us. If we have that soul which has been doing evil for 11 months, then you will find that even though the shayateen have been locked up, 
it will continue to do the evil which it has been practicing for the past 11 months. So this leads us to a point that we need to make clear tawbah, tawbah al nasuha before the dakhul shahru Ramadan. Before the month of Ramadan enters, we need to seek as much tawbah as possible so we can train our nafs to benefit from the good deeds on that day. There are many blessings of fasting, many benefits of fasting. From those benefits of fasting is that, as we mentioned in passing, that due to you doing so many good deeds and due to you training your soul to be obedient, you will reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a month of training because you spend a whole month abstaining from what? Abstaining from that which is halal. For whose sake? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if you are able to abstain from halal for a whole month, that means thereafter you can abstain from the haram. Okay? Easily. Because now you've trained your soul. So the month is a blessing. It's an opportunity for us to go on that course of retraining our soul. And that's why Allah says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ صِيَامْ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Fasting was prescribed upon you like it was prescribed upon those before you. Why? What's the reason? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps and in hope that you will gain taqwa. And what is taqwa? Taqwa is a barrier that you put between you yourself and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing good deeds. Okay? So it's a month of retraining yourself to do good deeds. And everyone finds it easy to train themselves in that month if they have the right preparation and the right mindset. From the rewards of fasting the month of Ramadan, and there are many, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned as in Bukhari and Muslim, narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet ﷺ said, Man sama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbihi. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, iman and having iman wa ihtisab, then his previous sins will be forgiven for him. So what does this word mean that whoever fasts Ramadan with Iman and Ihtisaban? With Iman means that you have faith in its obligation. That you take it not as an act of culture, not as an act of habit, not because your family is fasting, no. You are fasting because you believe in the obligation from your Lord. That's why you're fasting. Also, something very important, Ihtisaban. You have deep expectancy of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every moment of your day, you should remind yourself, I'm doing this to please Allah Azawajal. I'm hoping to gain a mountain every day of reward. I'm hoping to enter through the gates of Jannah through these actions that I am doing. So the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever fasts in this manner, then they will find that their previous sins have been forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ narrates in a hadith Qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Kullu amal ibn Adam lahu the Prophet ﷺ said, narrating on behalf of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, All of the deeds of the son of Adam are for him, except for fasting, for that is for me, and I will reward it. So in here, Allah is claiming this deed for himself. Why he does that, the ulama, they say, because this deed of fasting has so much ikhlas, so much sincerity in it. There's no riyah, there's no showing off. How is that? A person can go through the day of fasting and he can sneak a few morsels of food into his mouth or sips of water and nobody will know. Nobody would see you hiding in the cupboard, having a quick chocolate. Nobody's going to know under the table in the kitchen. Nobody knows except Allah Azawajal. But because you go to the extent of even when you make wudu, you don't allow a drop of water to enter your throat, because you are aware of Allah Azawajal, this shows you the level of the ikhlas of that act of worship. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّهُ لِي It is for me. And then he said, وَإِنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ I will reward it. So the ulama, they said that the reward of actions are what? From 10 to 700, except for fasting. Nobody knows the reward of fasting. It's not been mentioned. The reward of fasting is known to Allah Azawajal. And he will reward it abundantly. And also a meaning which is given to this part is that some of the ulama, they said, you know, on the day of judgment, some wretched people will come because they abused people on earth. They took the rights of people or they spilled their blood unjustly. Then the one who this was done to, the one who was wronged, will come to that person and demand that his good deeds given to him as a form of recompense. 
until the person becomes bankrupt of good deeds. No more good deeds left, except for fasting. The good deed of fasting will not be touched. Allah will not allow it to be touched. This was mentioned by Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar Shanqiti, Hafidhullah, and others. Tayyib. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as narrated in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, he said, Al-Siyam wal Quran yashfa'ani lil abdi yawm al qiyamah. That your fasting and your recitation of the Quran will intercede for you on the day of judgment. What is the month of Ramadan? It's full of fasting, it's full of Quran. 30 days and how many hours you put into that will come to you on the day of judgment if Allah accepts it to intercede for you. يقول الصيام أي رب منعته طعام وشهوات بالنهار فشفأني فيه. The fasting will say, Oh my Lord, I prevented him from having food and enjoyments during the day, so allow me to intercede on his behalf. ويقول القرآن أي رب منعته النوم بالليل فشفأني فيه. And the Quran will say, My Lord, I prevented him from sleeping in the night. So allow me to intercede for him. فَيُشَفَّعَانَ Then the Prophet ﷺ said they will both be allowed to intercede. So when the month of Ramadan comes, attach yourself to the Qur'an. Spend as much time with the Qur'an knowing that it's building up your bank of good deeds and knowing that it will come to defend you from any harm on the Day of Judgment. It will intercede on your behalf. Sometimes when we fast, we find that we tend to have a bad smell, a bad breath coming from our mouth. Why does that happen? Because of what's taking place in your stomach. Your stomach's empty. So the breath, there's a bad smell that emanates from that. But guess what? To Allah that smell is not bad. To Allah that is something else. The Prophet said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَّدِي لَخَلُوفُ فَمَصَائِمْ أَطْيَبُ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ بِنْ رِحَ الْمِسْكِ The Prophet said, I swear by the one whose hand my soul is in that the smell of the fasting person that which comes from his mouth is more beloved to Allah than the smell of musk, than the smell of the greatest of smells, the greatest of perfumes. So imagine yourself now walking and living those moments of Ramadan, even that smell which is in your stomach and emanating from your mouth, mouth is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So imagine the rest of your day. Imagine the rest of the acts that you are doing, how beloved they are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Motivate yourself, get excited. Say to Allah, Allah, I'm going to prove to myself, I'm going to prove to you that I can be somebody else in Ramadan. I'm going to show you amazing deeds. I'm going to do so much. Have the intention, whether you do it or not, but having the intention in of itself will be rewardable and it will motivate you to do good deeds. The fast, as we know, is beloved to Allah. That's why we have to ensure that our fasting day is not the same as a normal day. You cannot be the same in Ramadan as you are outside of Ramadan. Do not let that happen. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Bukhari, narrated by Abu Huraira, radiyallahu anhu, man lam yada' qawlu zur wa amal bihi, fa laysa lillahi haja an yada' ta'amuhu wa sharabuhu. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever while fasting doesn't leave alone false speech and false action, meaning bad action and bad speech, then Allah has no need of him to leave alone his what? his food and his drink. It's not about that. Remember we mentioned the verse, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ It's about that you gain piety. So do not allow your fasting day to be like a normal day. So when you go to work and your secretary or your understudy or whoever at work is giving you a hard time, is really making it difficult for you, right? Instead of shouting at that person, let them off for the month of Ramadan. Let them have a nice easy time. If somebody's arguing with you, fighting with you, what do you do? What should you say? I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Taib, why do you say I'm fasting, I'm fasting? Why? What's the wisdom? Huh? That's what it is. It's to remind yourself. It's not to remind him. He doesn't care. He's angry. He wants to achieve his anger. It's for you. You're reminding yourself, I'm on a different level today. I'm fasting. I'm not going to entertain this bad behavior. Taib, so the, mo- the month of Ramadan, we cannot have... Uh, the days to be the same as they are outside of the month of Ramadan. Shahr Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihi Al Quran. The month of Ramadan wherein the Quran was revealed. It's all about the Quran as well as the other acts of worship. We find that we attach ourselves and we become addicted to so many wasteful things in life. 
You find that you cannot have even your supper or your dinner or your breakfast unless you're on the internet, unless you're surfing something, even if it's no benefit to you, unless you're checking your WhatsApp, unless you're checking your email. You find if you don't do that, something is missing in your daily routine. Now we want to change those feelings, that addiction, we want to break that, and we want to make ourselves feel like that for the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. We want to feel that if I'm not looking at the Qur'an in the day, my day has gone to waste. If I don't look at the Qur'an and read the Qur'an, a certain amount of it, I've lost out on so much. That's what we want to obtain, or obtain from the month of Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu said as in Tirmidhi, مَنْ قَرَأَ حَرْفًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَلَهُ بِهِ حَسَنًا وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا لَا أَقُولُ أَلِفْ لَا مِيمْ حَرْف وَلَكِنْ أَلِفْ حَرْف وَلَا مُنْ حَرْف وَمِيمْ حَرْف The Prophet Sallallahu said as in Tirmidhi, whoever recites a letter from the Qur'an, then he will have due to that recitation 10 rewards. And he confirmed, he said, I'm not telling you that Alif La Mim is one half, one letter. Rather, Alif is a letter on its own. Lam is a letter on its own. Mim is a letter on its own. So if you say Alif La Mim, how many rewards do you get? 30, right? So imagine now how many letters there are in the Quran? 320,000 plus, as mentioned by Ibn Kathir. 320,000 plus in the Quran. Imagine the rewards you are getting times them by 10 and in Ramadan, multiply them even more. So in the month of Ramadan, allow yourself to be attached to the Qur'an. Taib, what if somebody says, yani, I really find it difficult reciting the Qur'an. It's really hard, it just doesn't come off my tongue. We say to them, stop being a miskin. Stop, stop harming yourself. That's all it is. Practice a bit more, try a bit harder, sit a bit more with your teacher, take it a bit more serious, and you will find after a month of practice, it will start to flow off your tongue. As simple as that. Put in the effort. How many times is a subject you cannot understand? You go and take a course and you understand it after that course. Right? We have to do that with the Quran. We have to ensure that we can recite the Quran to a basic level so that we can benefit from it and we can enjoy it. But also, the Prophet wasallam said, as in the hadith narrated by Muslim. And this is to encourage us. Allah always is in, encourages us. He never makes us feel in a situation of despair. He's always encouraging us. Even if still after trying, you're from that person who cannot recite Quran properly, listen to this hadith. The Prophet said, Al-Mahiru bil Quran ma'a safarati al-kiram al-barara wal-ladhi yaqra al-Quran wa yattata'u fihi wa huwa alayhi shaq falahu ajran. The Prophet said that the one who recites the Quran fluently and in a good way, he's with a special company of angels. But the one who recites the Quran and trips up over it and stutters and it's difficult for him, then he gets two rewards. Two rewards. The reward of reciting the Quran and the reward of striving. You see, you never, ever, ever lose that with the Quran. Ibn Taymiyyah and others from amongst the Salaf, they said that if you want taysir fi amurik, if you want to have ease in your worldly affairs, if you want to have blessings, you want to have joy, you want to have your soul in a state of tranquility, increase in the reading of the Qur'an. The more you read the Qur'an, the more your foundation for happiness will be there. Okay? The more you attach to the Quran, yourself to the Qur'an, the more you will benefit. But I have to say, don't stop it now. Just stop. I'm literally telling you stop. See this word? Stop. Don't do it anymore. Don't allow the days to pass anymore and you don't know what the Qur'an is saying to you. Khalas, finished. Start learning Arabic. It's so easy, you can do it by yourself. There, is, there are courses now, free books, I think they call 80% of the words in the Quran. There's a certain amount of words that they reoccur so often in different forms in the Quran. But this book, it, it summarizes it down to about uh, a couple of hundred. So you learn these couple of hundred words, by doing so you've learned 80% of the Quran in meaning. Make the effort. How can you go now, Ramadan after Ramadan, day after day, reading the Qur'an, hearing the Qur'an, and you can't be moved because you didn't understand the meanings of the words. The only thing that's moving you is if the Imam, he has a nice recitation, then you are moved. If he has a recitation like me, a croaky voice, you're not going to be moved. But if you understood the meanings of the words, no matter who recites it, you will be moved because you're connected to the meaning. So make that effort. Stop it. Make a change from today. Make a plan from today when you go home. Spend half an hour researching how to fulfill this goal. There's three weeks left to Ramadan, just a bit more. 
even you can cover this 80% of the Quran in these three weeks. In the month of Ramadan, a few more things to mention. The month of Ramadan, many people, they rush to the masjid for taraweeh. And this is something which is fantastic because they read the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, Man qama Ramadan, imana gufira lahuma min dhambihi. Whoever stands the nights of Ramadan, out of faith and out of expectancy of reward, then Allah Jal will forgive him his previous sins, right? So everyone rushes to the masjid for taraweeh. And this is something which is fantastic. But there's a big problem. Where are they for the obligatory prayers? Why do you turn things upside down? You're coming from the nawafil, something which is nafil, supererogatory. If you were to leave it, no, you wouldn't be punished. It just means you lose out on reward. But you're not coming to the masjid for the obligatory prayers. This is turning things upside down. And the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ abdi bi shay أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَدْتُ عَلَيْهِ وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ So in this hadith, Allah is telling us that He said, My slave doesn't come closer to me except by fulfilling that which is an obligation. And once he does that, he continues to come close to me by doing the, uh, the nawafil, the extra deeds, until I love him. And the hadith goes on. So don't turn it upside down. Ensure that you are doing the obligatory praise and the obligatory deeds and focus on the extra deeds so we can get the reward. Tayyib, how many raka'at should we pray in the masjid? Salat al taraweeh We're going to cover this in the fiqh also. But there's always, every month, there's confusion and there's argumentations within, within the same family. The Prophet sallallahu as narrated in Bukhari by Aisha radiyallahu anha, she said, ما كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يزيد في رمضان ولا في غيره على إحدى عشر ركع. That the Prophet sallallahu never increased in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan upon 11 raka'at. And in some narrations, 13 raka'at. Tayyib, this is what she said. But it doesn't mean that the, the prayer, the taraweeh prayer is restricted to that. Because the Prophet sallallahu said elsewhere, as narrated Bukhari, Salatul Layl, the night prayer, mathna mathna. The night prayer is in twos. So the Prophet sallallahu left it open. If one of you fears that the dawn is about to come, he'll pray one rakah as a witr. It will make witr that which he prayed. So in this hadith, the second one I'm mentioning, the Prophet ﷺ said that night prayer is two by two. He left it open. And if one of you fears that it's about to be dawn, then let him pray a rakah of witr. Or let him pray one rakah, making what he prayed before, witr. Tayyib. And also the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith in Bukhari, Man qama al imam hatta yansarif kutiba lahu qiyam al-layl. Whoever stands with the imam until he leaves the prayer, then he gets the reward of the whole night. So don't leave the prayer because the imam is doing 20 rakah or 13 rakah or more, whatever it be, because you hold a different opinion. Because this is something which has a lot of flexibility in it. Take the full reward, okay? Rush to the masjid and pray with the imam as much as you can. Is it allowed to go from masjid to masjid looking for a good recitation? The ulama, they say, yes, though it's better and preferred to pray in your local masjid, okay? It's better and preferred to pray in your local masjid. But if you find that it's a particular masjid somewhere that has a nice recitation, which helps you increase in iman, helps you increase in khushu, then that is well and good. Tayyip, from the blessings of this month, is which Layla? Laylatul Qadr. Khairun min? How many months is it better than? A hundred, two hundred, five hundred, a thousand months. What a gift Allah is giving us. That the worship on that night will equate to a thousand months of worship. Something like 80 years, I believe, right? Subhanallah. A huge gift. And yet people sleep those nights. Or people say to themselves, you know what? It's only on the 27th night. We'll look for it just on that night. No, look for it on every odd and every even night of the last 10 days. Why do I say that? Because maybe the month started at the wrong day. So if, even if it started at the wrong time, by the virtue of you looking it for the odd and the even nights, you will find it. The last 10 nights, look for it every single night. And by the permission of Allah, Azza wa Jal, you will find that and you won't lose out on the huge rewards. From the blessings of Ramadan is that your dua is accepted. When you go to Surah Al-Baqarah and you read the verses of fasting, you find smack bang 
actually not exactly in the middle, but you find in the middle of them, Allah Azawajal mentions this verse. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ دَاءِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ And if my slaves ask about me, remember in the middle of the verses of fasting, if my slaves ask about me, then tell them I am close, I respond to the one who calls upon me. So it's like Allah is telling you while you are fasting, there is something here for you that if you ask me, I'm going to respond to your dua. And this is corroborated by other hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said that the dua of the fasting person is not rejected. So your dua while you are fasting is not rejected. Why? The ulama, they said one of the ways of strengthening your dua from being uh, accepted is you increase in good deeds and you lessen in bad deeds, right? The more you increase in good deeds, the more likely your dua is going to be accepted. What are you doing while fasting? What are you doing in the month of Ramadan? Deed after deed after deed. That's all you're doing. You, your whole day is good deeds. So as based on that, Allah gives you the gift of having your dua answered. So learn the duas from now that you want to specify in Ramadan. Select a few duas now that you want to learn before Ramadan that you want to be answered and you want to help you with your iman, etc. And do not forget those from your family. Do not forget those that have taught you any good. And do not forget those who are in need of your dua in the ummah. Make dua for those who need your duas. The Prophet Sallallahu said, and listen to this attentively. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was once climbing up the mimbar and he said, Ameen three times. After he came down, the companions, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we've seen you do something you never did before. You said, Ameen three times. He said, Jibreel Alayhi Salaam came to me and, to and made du'as and told me, say Ameen to these du'as. One of the du'as was where Jibreel Alayhi Salaam said, Raqima anf abdin dakhala alayhi ramadan falam yughfar lahu. He said, may the nose of that person be rubbed in dirt, meaning may he be humiliated. The one who enters upon Ramadan, lives Ramadan, and then he is not forgiven. Yani, what he's trying to say, and Allah knows best, is what value do you have? Allah gave you all these opportunities, all these opportunities to seek his forgiveness and to gain his forgiveness in that month, and you didn't manage it's impossible. It's too, it's too far-fetched. The most wretched of us can seek the forgiveness of Allah جل, in the month of Ramadan. So let us ensure that we take and we hold on to every single moment of Ramadan and even before Ramadan with the idea that this is the chance for us to change our lives. It's the chance for us to enter into Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us life to live Ramadan and He makes us from those who are successful in worshipping Allah Azawajal and entering into Jannah after the month of Ramadan. Anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan. If you have any questions or clarifications, then feel free. And remember, inshallah, the next two sessions, hopefully, will be upon the fiqh, the jurisprudence of how to fast. Wa jazakumullah khair wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.